Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valor, your neighborhood pyrography artist, and this is another AAC or Animal Artist Collective video. This month, for, or this round for September, is the Temperate Forest. And for my animal, I chose the Lynx Rufus, which is the Bobcat, or also known as the Bobcat. There are two different types of Lynx, but for this video and this piece, I am only focusing on the smaller Bobcat. Now, I do want to be up front. My piece is not done yet. I'm like 90% done, maybe a little bit more, but it isn't done yet. With everything going on, I was unable to both get this done and get the video out, and I really wanted to get the video out for you. So real quick, if you're new to the Animal Artist Collective, it was started by Denise and Jennifer with the idea of helping to promote information about wildlife so all the pieces that are created by the artists that are doing this 50% of that or more is donated to a charity of our choice and this month we have a special guest artist Mel Mariposa and so make sure you check out her video along with everybody else's and learn about some more animals I do want to mention that my supplies for this piece is an 8 by 10 Trakel birch panel and I believe this this is the quarter inch and I'm also using my Optima and I will be switching back and forth between actually several pins, ball tips, a secret pin that's still being worked on but you'll see it in this one. Let's see if you catch it. Um, I also used a lot of my spear shader and it's a lot of going back and forth so what you'll see is I did not include every video I filmed for this piece because so far I'm at about 20 hours and over a hundred fi uh, video files and still got some more to finish so we're going to be speeding through this and not seeing every part I did label each section if I was changing from like the eyes which I just finished and then we're going into the top cat and filling that in. Now I put the reference photos that I took from Arizona at the beginning of the video. I took two of my photos and put them together for this one piece and you saw the one um, photo of them together is what I created and what this piece needs, what I want it to look like and at the end of this you'll see that the, t the cats still aren't dark enough and I may have to take the torch to it. And I don't know if I want that to be recorded because I would die if I mess this up after so many hours. I did a dark background for this one, which I don't normally do, but I felt that it lent itself very well to the composition of the piece. I did not include all of the dark burning because I think that took me, that took me a while. <laughs> There's quite a bit of video files and when I burn you don't normally see the smoke but there you go <laughs> we have smoke I was burning between a six and seven and a half and this is the large spear shader that I used to fill in most of the background bobcats are the most common wild cat in North America they are named bobcat of course because they're short bob tail they are medium-sized cats and are slightly smaller, but similar in appearance to their cousin, the lynx. Their coats vary in color from shades of beige to brown fur with spotted or lined marks in dark brown or black. They are hunters and they mainly hunt rabbits and hares, but they're also known to eat rodents, birds, bats, and even adult deer in the winter time. There's approximately 720,000 to one million bobcats remaining in the wild. Bobcats were once found throughout most of North America from northern Mexico to southern Canada and in the early to mid 1900s bobcat populations in many midwestern and eastern states of the United States were decimated due to increased value of their fur. They are not on the endangered species currently as their populations have been able to bounce back. They are still um, protected and they started being protected in the 70s 
Babcat habitats do they are a large range ranging from forest and mountain areas to semi-desert and brushland. For me the focus was on the temperate forests of which we do have here in Flagstaff with the changing of the seasons we we do fall within that temperate forest and we do have bobcats um, though they are solitary and t uh, territorial animals you don't see them often they're normally out at night um, females never share their territory with each other and male territories however tend to overlap so I have to wonder because I got these photos at Arizona the bobcats do live together in their habitat so I wonder if they are males for that very reason that they the males can overlap each other but the females don't seem to like that um, the territories are established uh, with scent markings and territory size are extremely varied generally generally 25 to 30 square miles for males and about five square miles for females on their dens they have several of them one main den and several auxiliary dens so i'm guessing that they have their own spring break area with that <laughs> side condos vacay anyway usually a cave or a rock shelter but maybe a hollow log a hollow tree or some other protected places their auxiliary dens um, tend to be located in less visit visited portions of the home range there are often brush piles, rocks, ledges, or stumps. They also call they are also called shelter dens. And I'm trying to read this, and I'm trying to figure out why I'm having a hard time. Anyway, <laughs> their mating season is late winter, but throughout the year is possible. The females gestate for 50 to 70 days, and the kittens are usually born around early spring. And they tend to have one to six kittens in the litter. The kittens begin eating solid food at around two months after learning to hunt at five months. Oh, not after, beginning to. That makes a difference. So they start hunting around five months and when they are between eight and 11 months, the kittens are evicted for their mother's territory. Oh, so it's kind of after like I graduated high school. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> now there are threats to these bobcats um, in Mexico. They are prosecuted as heat predators and are frequently killed by farmers. They are still hunted and trapped for their fur throughout most of their range. Habitat destruction and ever-expanding human population limit their range. Now like with the ravens, I went looking for uh, gemstones or minerals that are associated with the uh, bobcat and the only thing I could find it w was or is what's called the link stone which is a mythical stone uh, the Greeks called it and I'm so gonna butcher this so let's just do it uh, lingorum and what it was believed to be is lynx urine yes it was claimed that it had the power to attract objects including metal and the Greeks believed it also had healing powers and what it was is when a lynx would urinate and cover up the spot where it had urinated that that would turn into a stone and if a person could find that stone they would be granted special powers they also believed it had the ability to heal mainly bladder issues and things like that now scientists believe or historians believe that that was possibly an amber stone that they found or other similar stones and that the link stone never actually existed i also went looking for myths and legends about bobcats and it turns out that there is a uh, quite a few stories within the Native American tribes in the U.S. and some pair the bobcat with coyote as in partners while others uh, tribes have them as complete odds. Some tribes found bobcat or ha hold bobcats as um, tricksters and not your friend while other tribes have them as 
deities. So it, it ranges for the Bobcats. <laughs> so back to the burning. You've been watching me lay down fur lines and basically most of what you've been seeing up until this point is me just laying out where the different patterns go so I can erase my pencil lines including the whiskers I just decided to get rid of them I can always I am going to go back and scratch some of them out and also add either color white colored pencil or acrylic ink for those white high, uh, whiskers and the high highlights I don't know that I'm going to add too much to the fur because they are a more beigey color and less white so it's just a matter of me laying down the different groups of fur and in the direction that they go and then going back and darkening up those areas and that is where I need to finish is to tighten up my details to see if I can smooth out that dark background a little better to scratch out some highlights so that the low high highlights meaning not as bright as your high highlights I need to go ahead and scratch those in and seal this with a matte varnish because I really don't want the glare of the dark background taking away from the piece I also need to darken the top bobcat where only his eyes are really what you're focused on and the rest of him recedes into the background but that also needs to happen with the bobcat I'm working on now I want his face and his eyes to be the main part that you first see and then you start noticing the rest as he also fades into the background I had a hard time coming up with a composition for this one I knew I was time limited on getting this piece done so I didn't want it too big but I also wanted to be able to get a lot of detail in so now it's just a very slow and sometimes painful process of going back over and darkening and darkening in fact I've darkened the dark the top cat a lot I may actually have to take the torch to it to get it even darker so this piece will be available after the 16th with 50% of the proceeds going to Defenders of the Wild if you're new here please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell happy burning guys bye